Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Rapid Fire Reaper Tutorials, all info, no fluff. And today we're talking about maximizing your screen real estate. It's the only type of real estate that an audio engineer can afford these days. Let's try to maximize it. So what do I mean by screen real estate? What that means is utilizing the entire space of your screen to work towards your advantage, decluttering things in a way that you really see what you need to see. And the second bit is to set up Reaper so that windows don't just like pop in and out of nowhere and clutter up your space and you're not constantly moving things around. So really the key to that for Reaper is using screen sets, which we have talked about before. So I have different screen sets based on different things that I'm doing. But assuming you have some screen sets, let's talk about some view based actions. So as always, I'm going to start by rapid firing through some of the defaults. Then we'll look at some things that are improved, some SWS actions and so on. And then we'll get into some custom actions and stuff like that. Don't worry about taking notes as we go, because you'll see a list of everything at the end of the video, which you can screenshot or you can find it in the blog. And as always in the blog, I'll also go over some stuff that I end up editing out of this video. This is Reaper in its most default form. And as you probably already know, there are a number of windows in Reaper. All of these windows you can access by going to view. These are all those windows. So things like your media explorer, your effects browser, your big clock, your video window, all of them are accessible here. And you can see the default hotkeys for them. So just go and have a read there, but I'll show you some of the more useful ones. You can hit shift and forward slash or question mark to open your action list. From there, as you can see, this window is focused. So you can hit escape to get out of that. Shift and F is your effects browser. Command shift and V is your video window. And with this one, you can just hit it again to toggle. Media Explorer, command option and X. This one's a toggle. So some of these are toggles and some of them are not. Command option and M shows your master track in your arrange window. Command and M is your mixer. And that one's another toggle. And finally, another useful one that people may not know about is command option V to give you your navigator. And this would be familiar to anybody who uses the overview in Ableton or the universe, I think it's called in Pro Tools and Logic Pro. And basically you just navigate your project like this. Then you can dock this here or you can dock it above and you get a bird's eye view of your entire project. If you're really zoomed in or something, you can just use this to navigate both ways through your track, which is quite nice if you're into that sort of thing. Command option and R is your render and this one is not a toggle. So you just hit escape to get out of it. Option and R is your routing matrix and command option shift and R is your region marker manager. Now, as you can see, it's a little bit random where things pop up in Reaper by default, right? This just kind of shows up on the top right. My effects browser shows up here. My action list shows up here. My media explorer is docked by default. My mixer is also docked by default. And also each window has its own hotkeys, which is useful. But let me show you a more useful thing you can do. So this is my default screen set in Reaper. I can hit the same hotkeys to get to the action list. And my action list, effects browser, all this stuff down here are all docked here on the right side of my screen. So I can always access them. I can just tap through them instead of pressing the corresponding hotkey for each one. And if I want to get rid of that window, though, I can just hit shift F7. And that's my hotkey for loading screen set number one. Then I have this stuff on the right, which again, I can hit command and M to get rid of that. But I have all these tabs. So another good command is alt and H gets rid of all the docked items. Now in your default Reaper, you also have this command for activating the next tab and it's set to command shift tab. But there's a problem with that, at least in Mac command and shift tab is already assigned to moving backwards through your open windows. So for me, I have changed that to be control and tab and that works. You can obviously go in Mac and disable that hotkey, but I use that hotkey quite often. So I don't want to do that. So instead I just change it in Reaper. So I can always come here, add a hotkey because it's a special key, hit this control and tab, hit okay, and then just remove the original hotkey. And now if I hit command and tab, I'll move to the next one. However, you'll see a problem right away. The first one registers, but immediately after that, because this window will be focused and this is my media explorer, the action stops working. Or if you're in your effects browser, this window will be in focus. So command and tab no longer works as you can see. So what I can do instead is make a very simple custom action. This one just runs the first action Docker activate next tab, and then it refocuses the arrange window. So if I'm just control and tabbing, none of these windows come into focus, the arrange window is still in focus. And then if I find a window that I want, let's say my media explorer, I'll just click here and start typing. So that's a good way of not having to memorize what all your windows hotkeys are, but just really memorizing the action 
position this and then from here I can just tap to the window that I want. And again, I can always hit my load screen set and this one will go away. I can also hit Alt H to hide all dockers. And now if I want to really maximize my real estate, I can hit Command and F11. And that also gets rid of the top bar. It will only be in view if you hover your mouse over it. And finally, I have another custom action, which also hides my transport bar up here and my top toolbar like that. And now this is really the maximum amount of real estate that I can have. So if I'm editing, this is the screen set that I'm using. Now I can save this as a screen set, but I have run out of space. I'm using all my 10 screen sets and there are no more. So I just kind of operate from my default. Then when I want, I can further hide other things with these two custom actions. So this is what I use to maximize my real estate from any screen set. I can hit Alt and H and that hides all the dockers. And then I hit this hotkey and that gets rid of my top toolbar and my transport bar. Command and comma is your preferences for PC users. That's control and P. And another very useful thing are a series of Cfilian scripts that open specific preference pages. So if you find that there's preference pages that you open a lot, it's nice to give them their own hotkey. For example, something I need to do quite often. If you hit your audio device configuration action, it asks you to stop the project, which I always forget to do. So I just have a hotkey for that. Command, option, control and P and that stops playback and then shows me my device settings. Also, sometimes when I first hit play, my device is not registered. So all I got to do is hit it and then hit return. I'm back in business. Another one that I have a special hotkey for, command, option, and comma, brings me to my mouse modifiers directly so I don't have to scroll through and find it. So command and comma gets me to preference window, escape to get out of that. Command, option, and comma gets me to mouse modifiers. Additionally, I have F12 and that shows me my monitoring settings and that closes it as well. The default Fault for that is not a toggle, so you can only show it and you need a separate hotkey to hide it. Edgemail has a toggle show monitoring effects change script. That's the one that I use. If I hide dockers, option and D shows the dockers again and it shows all dockers again. You know, based on my screen set, I use this quite often or not at all. But if I do Alt and H to hide everything, then I can do Alt and D to bring everything back. Finally, this command is really nice to know if you're an Ableton user. So in Ableton, when you're in a range view, your track controls are not on the left of your timeline, but on the right so you can run this action if you're used to this kind of viewing so that may be something that you would prefer if you're an Ableton X user and didn't know about this you're probably creaming your pants right about now you're welcome so that's it for today thanks for watching and if you like the work I do please donate to me through buymeacoffee.com the link of that will be in the description thanks to Andy for being our most recent donor and Andy is a third time donor so thank you so much Andy you're one of the biggest supporters of this channel you really keep me going thank you so much make sure to check out the blog post for more info and things that I'll end up editing out of this video and I'll see you all very soon bye bye